welcome to episode 161 of Board Game Blitz, a podcast about all things board games that you can listen to in less time than it takes to complete a typing lesson from Mavis Beacon. Board Game Blitz is sponsored by Gray Fox Games. This week, we're talking about word games. First, we discuss a couple games we've played recently, Echoes the Cocktail, Echoes the Microchip, and Birds of a Feather. Then, we go through our top five word games. And now, here are your hosts, Andy and Crystal. All right, before we get into the main episode, I have a special pre-recorded announcement here. Crystal's going to hear it too, so you can hear her react <laughs> to the re- recorded announcement. But but here it is. Well, game day is coming to Kickstarter on Monday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> my heart. <laughs> I can't. They're too cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh so translation in case you can't understand what was said board game day which is my children's book that i've made about board games is coming to kickstarter on monday <laughs> yay! yay so yeah there will be a link in the show notes but check out the kickstarter page it's launching july 18th sometime in the morning oh that's so exciting Recently, I'm actually going to talk about two games because they're in the same series of games. I played Echoes the Cocktail and Echoes the Microchip. These are both in the series Echoes. <laughs> these are both games published by Ravensburger and designed by Matthew Dunstan and Dave Neal. But they're like an escape room type game, but they're not escape rooms. They're not timed or anything, but it's like a murder mystery deduction type game. Not always murder mystery. <laughs> but what's interesting about this game is it's an audio mystery game. So Echoes, all the Echoes series comes with an app. And you have to download the app from Robinsberger. And basically the box just comes with a bunch of cards with different pictures on them. And you're trying to get the story put in order. So it, you can scan all of the different cards and each card has a different audio clue in it. So like you hear something going on and then you scan a different card and you hear something going on and you're trying to piece them together. Like, oh, I heard this in the background and then like, like kind of continued on this card. So these go together. And there's six chapters in the story, which have like chapter tiles. There's three cards in each chapter. So you have to put those in order in the chapters and then put the chapters in order. And like, as you complete each chapter, more audio gets unlocked kind of. So you like hear the full audio of the chapter, including things that were left out in the audio clues. And then you're like, oh, okay, that's what happened. And then you can put together the chapters in order and then you hear the ending of the story. But I really like these types of games, like murder, mystery, story games like and I thought this was really interesting because it's all audio there was a little bit of clues in the card art sometimes the card art had some clue that was relating to the audio and it's like oh it was this and this and then that kind of helps you figure out who was saying it or like what happened but most of it is just putting the audio in order I played Echoes the Cocktail with three players and Echoes the Microchip with five players It can be played with like one player uh, (laughs) or probably best with like two or three, I think. But it can be played with as many people as can hear the audio, theoretically. (laughs) If you like murder mystery type games and like story driven, it doesn't really have any loss conditions or anything. It's just like putting it in order. If When you try to solve the story, you just scan the cards in order, a chapter at a time, so three cards in order. And if you get it wrong, it tells you, oh two out of the three are right or something and then you can like press the hint to say more details on it like this one was in the right spot this one was not (laughs) this one's in a different chapter stuff like that but that didn't happen too much to us because we're really good (laughs) yeah I I really liked it Uh oh another thing is it's for ages 14 plus and that is because of the story theme Uh, it involves death and dark things like that so both the cocktail and the microchip or dark story themes. So it's for older people, not for little kids. (laughs) And there are also two other games in the Echo series, The Dancer and The Cursed Ring, I think. And I don't know anything about those stories, but I'm planning on playing them at some point. So yeah, that's Echoes the Cocktail and Echoes the Microchip. Awesome. Yeah, I've been super curious about those Echoes games. It's been one of those Mm -hmm. ones that's like, it's on my list. I'm interested, but I'm not desperate to play them. And I still have a few other escape Mm room-esque games sitting on the shelf, so I haven't been (laughs) stressing, but you make me want to pick them up. So (laughs) good job, apparently. (laughs) Yeah, they're super small boxes, so they're really portable, I guess, if you want to bring them somewhere. I don't know. (laughs) 
Well, I recently got to play the new version of a game that came out in 2016 called Birds of a Feather. The new version is coming out from Snowbright Studios, designed by Teal Fristo, and it's called Birds of a Feather Western North America. And this is a lightweight family style card game where you are going birding and trying to observe as many different birds as you can. And it goes from one to seven players, which is nice. That high player count is really good. And since play is simultaneous, the number of players does not affect playtime. So what happens is everyone gets dealt out a certain number of bird cards in their hand, and then all players will simultaneously play a bird to the table. And then you get to observe the birds that showed up, but only in the ones that are in the same type of habitat as the bird you played. So if I play a bird that's in the blue habitat, I'm not gonna do the names because I'll get them wrong. I don't remember <laughs> the names of the habitats, but like the one that's the blue habitat, if anyone else played a card that was in the blue habitat, I get to observe that bird as well and mark it off on my score sheet. And then what's really cool is the birds that showed up then move into the inner circle and they stay on the table. And the next round, you play a new bird, again, everyone simultaneously, and you get to observe all the birds from the habitat of the bird you played, including birds that were played the previous round. So if mm. a whole bunch of birds from that purple habitat got played the previous round, and I have a purple card in my hand, the next round, I can put down that purple card and observe all of those birds. And they only stay on the board or on the table for one, one round, and then they're gone. And so it just keeps cycling. You always have basically two sets of birds that you can observe from. And you get certain amounts of points depending on the type of bird. And then there's like in each habitat, there's also an egg, which is worth nothing, no points for observing it, but it's the only way to, to observe every single thing in a habitat, which gets you a three point bonus. So there's an interesting amount of strategy because you're like, oh, if I observe that two winged bird, that's going to be two points. But if I observe that egg, then that'll help me complete my green habitat and then I'll get three bonus points. And so there's some interesting strategy, but like the mechanics are dead simple. I described the whole thing. Literally, everybody, play a bird, play a bird, play a bird. <laughs> That's it. You just put down cards simultaneously. It's lightning fast to play. I had heard a lot of buzz about this one in the past. This is one of those games that multiple people were saying, oh my gosh, I'm so sad this one's out of print. You know, I really wish I owned a copy of it. And now, it, since it is coming back into print, I'm really excited. I actually have a pre-production copy of the new version of the game, but I backed the game on Kickstarter as well. And if this, if you're looking for another, for a light card game to throw into your quiver or your backpack or your purse, I think this is a great one. And you can actually late pledge for it on GameFound. We will put the link to the GameFound campaign in the show notes. So yeah, that is Birds of a Feather, Western North America, a light, quick card game that is really wonderful and i highly recommend it yeah i saw this a lot of buzz on this when it was on kickstarter and it's really pretty too it it's is really, really pretty, pretty and nice. some of the things on the game found page they mm -hmm. actually have art prints and they have a whimsical Ooh, wooden cool. bird puzzle that looks Ooh. so cool it's one of those expensive wooden puzzles that where oh. all the pieces are <laughs> unique and they're bird shaped Andy. like there's <laughs> lots of birds it's so oh That's it's gorgeous cool. yeah As people who have been listening to the podcast for a while likely know, I like words a whole lot. <laughs> Would you say what? that's an accurate statement, Amy? <laughs> you like words? That's news to me. <laughs> I, you, I, first off, I like to talk a lot, which good thing I start, we started a podcast because that helps me get some of those words out of my brain. But really, language and the study of language and etymology and the history and like all of that like fascinates my brain. And so mm. I was like, wait a second, we have never done a top word game list. I feel like we should do that. Yeah. And I also really like word games. I'm not as into words as Crystal is. Uh, I didn't actually know like the word etymology before this podcast, I think. But... I think most people who listen to this podcast did not know the word etymology. <laughs> and a, a bunch of people still confuse it with entomology, which is mm. the study of insects. And no shame, yeah. y'all. They're very similar words. Yep. So top word games. So how did you make your list, Crystal? Because <laughs> okay, you, you so like a lot of word games. <laughs> <laughs> I do like word games. And it feels like something I should have been aware of, but I really, I don't think I had completely realized that 
so many word games are also party games or party mm -hmm. style games. And that's not a bad thing, but I just, when I went to look at all of the word games I've played, A, there's a lot of them. And then B, a lot of them are party games. And I love me a good party game, especially one involving words. So I was struggling to make a list of five and to order them. And so for me personally, I actually took out of contention for my top five games that are like really solidly just a party game. And again, that is not shade to these games. I love them, but like they're so good and they, they're so, they have such broad appeal. I feel like often if I, if we did a top party game list, a lot of these word games would actually mm -hmm. show up on my top yeah. party game list. And so I wanted to highlight other word games that are less about the big group party aspect and more about the words themselves. But that's just because mm -hmm. I had to narrow it down somehow. Again, <laughs> I you're, you're going to talk about some of the ones that I omitted and I'm going to get uh -huh. to talk about them, which makes me happy. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I did include party games. I actually like a lot of word party, like specifically my group likes word party games a lot. So we, we like playing those. <laughs> My number five is a game that is ridiculously difficult to get a hold of. And I think that is partially why it is lower on my list because it is not able to be acquired easily, in, especially in the United States. And that is Pankatsu Factory. Pankatsu Factory is a game where all of the players have tiles with letters on them and you behind a screen will arrange those letters into a number of words. So you're gonna spell out some words and then you're gonna take your tiles, mix them up, pass them to one of the players next to you, and they are going to try and recreate the words that you spelled with the tiles that you used to spell them. And that sounds really simple. And it's not. <laughs> like, it's somehow shockingly difficult. And if you're like, oh, I'll use rare letters. Nope, that makes it easier sometimes. And sometimes mm -hmm. it makes it harder. Like, it, honestly, it's a fascinating little game. And it's very unique in my collection uh, because I don't have anything that's quite like it. And the artwork is kind of interesting. There's these little gears that you grab. There's a speed element to it and how quickly you can rearrange things. And you can score points even if you don't get the right words. So it's, I would say it's like friendly for people who aren't necessarily the best at word games. Because all you have to do is be able to spell some words and you'll get some points generally. But that is Pankatsu Factory, designed by Yoshihiko Koriyama and published by Itten. Itten actually publishes this one. It was published in 2014, so it's probably very hard to find. Yeah, I, I played this with you at Dice Tower West, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I only played it once though, so I kind of forgot about it when I was making my list. But also, spoiler, my list is only team or cooperative games because I tend to like those more. <laughs> so I really enjoy team and cooperative word games mm -hmm. as well. So no, yeah, that they're 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 great. They're they're good fun. My number five is actually on Crystal's list later up, so we'll talk about it then. Moving on to my number four is a game that just came out this year, 2022, and it is called Phantom Inc. I believe I've talked about this on the podcast before, or maybe I talked about it on Dice Tower tonight. It's sometimes hard to remember, but this is like borderline party game for me. This is probably like the closest I'm getting to a party game because it's a team-based game. You can play this at a party, but it feels a little thinkier than that. So each team has a spirit and then the rest of that, the, the team is mediums and the spirits for each team will collectively select an object from a card and then they have to give their teammates clues as to what the secret object is. But the way they're giving clues is by writing words on a sheet very slowly as if a ghost is writing them. And the players on their team will know what question was asked, but the other team won't. So the, the team asks a question, the ghost will answer it in regard to the object that is trying to be guessed. And when they're writing the answer, the team can stop them at any point in the writing of the answer to the question. So in theory, let's say the object is a baseball and Ambie's on my team. She selects a question that is, what shape is the object? I don't think this is a real question. I'm just making it up. So I could start writing S P H like sphere. And mm -hmm. chances are my team will know I'm trying to write sphere. 
pretty quickly because there aren't a lot of shapes that start with S P H, right? Mm-hmm. But the other team doesn't know what question was asked. They get to see what I wrote down, but they don't know the context for why I was writing it. And so you end up with both teams have sheets of half written words and you're trying <laughs> to figure out like, what could that have been? And eventually one t- the team that guesses the correct item obviously wins the round and then you move on. I explained more of it than I needed to, but it's just really fun. And I like Phantom Inc. a lot. And I know Ambie was in- is interested in playing it. And so mm-hmm. I think that's why I described it in more detail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is one that would maybe make my list, but I haven't played it. So <laughs> it almost made my list. <laughs> we, will, we will have to try and play it online soon. I bet we can figure out a way to do it mm-hmm. via video. Yeah, that'd be cool. My number four is Just One, which is one that was excluded from Crystal's list. <laughs> and it's so but... good. This would probably be my number one, honestly, if we if I was including all of the party games. Yeah. I love Just One so much. Yeah. So Just One is a party word game from 2018, published by Rebos Production, designed by Ludovic Rowdy and Bruno Sauter. In Just One, it's a cooperative party game where you're trying to guess words. Each time one person is guessing it and everyone else is writing one, just just one word down as a clue. <laughs> but if you write the same clue as someone else, then those cancel out. So you want to give a clue that's like not something that someone else will think of giving, but still points to the word because then the, the person's going to get everyone's clues that aren't canceled out and try to guess the word and they just get one guess. There's a lot of only one thing in this And game. it's so funny because <laughs> some words, basically, there's like, there's one clue mm-hmm. that would be the perfect clue. And yeah. inevitably, everyone doesn't <laughs> write it down. So like when you're talking about yeah. like the Incredible Hulk, nobody writes green. Yeah. Nobody writes Marvel or Avengers. Yeah. And so you end up with a bunch of very weird like, words yeah. about the Incredible Hulk, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, and then you're trying to guess it like, ah. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. If you like word party games, and this one's like fully cooperative too. I like fully cooperative. Well, I like I like both team ones and cooperative ones. But cooperative ones, like if you don't want to be on the head-to-head stressful thing, just one is great. And fun fact, Ambi, I know you're not as big of a fan of playing games online as I am, but there might be a new game in alpha on Board Game Arena called Just One. Is it the same game? It's the exact same game. It's, it's, and it's, it's the way you the, said the, it. it I know. Like I said not. it very strange. I don't know why. I think I was trying to be mysterious and I just ended up being weird. Uh, but yeah, Just One is an alpha on board of Game Ooh, Arena right now. Cool. So hopefully it'll be moved to beta in the near future so people can try I, I it out. I feel like party games are one that act, ones that would work better online for me. Yeah. You know, because it's not much of a board. Yeah. Yeah, so... My number three game is a word game I have loved for years. It is from designer Gil Hova, good friend of the show, and I own a lot of his games. I like a lot of the stuff he designs, and it's published by his publishing company, Formal Ferret Games, and that is Wordsy. Wordsy was originally released as Prolix, a different game. I never played Prolix, but I've played Wordsy a whole bunch since it came out in 2017. Wordsy is neat because it is competitive. There are cards with letters on them that come out onto the table, and unlike a lot of word games where you only can use the letters you see. In Wordsy, you can spell anything you want. There are no restrictions on what letters you can use, but the eight letters that are on the table have varying points allotted to them between five and two. And the more letters you can use that are on the table, the better your word will score. And then whoever scores the highest each round gets bonus points and things like that. So it's neat, though, because, like, if you're just stuck, you know, I th- that moment in a word game where you just can't think of something, it sucks. And so, really, what's neat about this game is you can literally just be like, I can't think of anything. You can just look at, like, two of the letters, like, two of the higher scoring letters, and be mm-hmm. like, what can I make out of those? And you can still score points. And you actually get to eliminate some of your lowest scoring rounds at the end of the game. So even when that happens, it's not likely to make it impossible for you to win. So Wordsy, I think, is a very friendly word game in that way. You will still have an advantage if you have a large vocabulary, especially of larger letter count words, but Wordsy is family friendly and it's timed. It's a real time game, which I know Ambie likes. Mm-hmm. So have you ever played Wordsy? Yeah, I played it a couple times. Okay. And uh, yeah, I liked it. And I do like awesome. that you can do like any word that, that helps yeah. a lot. <laughs> it, it's pretty cool. So yep, my number three, Wordsy. All right, my number three. Actually, my top three are kind of like 
interchangeable. Like it was hard to order them because it d- kind of depends on my mood and what I've been playing more. But uh, I kind of did it in my current, I guess, thoughts. So my number three is Code Names, which is a 2015 word party game designed by Vlada Shavatel and published by CGE. Code Names was one of the earlier word party games. Uh, that came out in like the hobby gaming area. I don't know. But I remember like we played Codenames before it came out at Dice Tower Con. Like one of the people from CGG just had it in his back pocket or something. It was kind of like one of those trench coat deals. He's like, hey, want to play a new <laughs> Vlada game? And we're like, yes. And it was like 2 a.m. And, and we stayed up late playing it. But... <laughs> <laughs> ah, the days of staying up till 2 a.m. Yeah. My body does not let me do that anymore. <laughs> so Codenames, and Codenames is a team versus team game. There's a grid of 25 words. Two different teams have different words in the grid that you're trying to guess. So there's a spy master on each team, and they see like which cards in the grid are your cards, which cards are the opponent's cards, and then there's also an assassin card and neutral cards. So the assassin card, if anyone guesses that, then they lose. But the other guessers are trying to guess all the words on your team. And in order for them to guess, the spy masters give clues. So they give a one word clue and then a number. So you're trying to connect as many words as possible with one clue because each turn the people can guess as much as you give the number. And then like if they mess up, then it goes to the next team and then they can guess for whatever their clue is. And you're trying to get all of your words first. So you're trying to like connect as much as you can because you're racing against the other team kind of. So it's really fun just trying to connect all of these words. Like if there's dog and cat and horse in there, but you only have dog and horse or something, you can't say animal because then there's also cat and people will guess cat. So you have to like think of something that only connects dog and horse, but not cat. (laughs) And there's 25 words. So there's a lot of words and you have to make sure that you don't like get them to hit the assassin. So I've played code names like 136 times apparently (laughs) Wow, (laughs) a lot Uh, I haven't played as much recently because there have been a lot of other party games that we've been playing because we played it so much but I I still think it's a great game so Codenames is my number three Codenames is awesome there are a few different versions of Codenames at this point Mm -hmm. and my favorite is still Codenames Duet which Mm -hmm. is the quote-unquote two-player Codenames but you can play Mm -hmm. it team based basically with two teams instead of two players and i love well, doing it's still that. cooperative two teams then yeah so yes oh it's still cooperative yes because yeah, codenames duet is cooperative so yes and maybe that's why i like it better it's funny though because when codenames came out my game group played the heck out of codenames and then mm-hmm. i burned myself out on it and i didn't yeah. want to play it at all anymore and now like enough time passed that i finally came back around to it and i was like this is still great yeah, <laughs> so, yeah i think that happened to me too <laughs> like we just really burned ourselves out on it and it it's gotten mass market like saturation more than most hobby mm-hmm. games do mm-hmm. and it's been published in a bunch of languages and yeah mm-hmm. i know i've run into non-gamers who are aware that code names exist so that says something mm-hmm. yeah my number two is a game i am sure i've talked about on the podcast before <laughs> and that is yes. letter jam interestingly mm-hmm. enough published by the same company that publishes code names CGE, knocking it out of the park with the word games. And this one, it's funny. People call Letter Jam a party game. It is not a party game. And, like, if you want to play it at a party, I'm not going to judge you. But Letter Jam, inevitably, is a bunch of people sitting around a table, staring at things, and being silent most of the time because you're (laughs) thinking. And that, to me is not a party game. I mean, like, Codenames is kind of like that for the, like, the spies, but then the teams get to discuss, I guess. Yeah, the teams can, like, hang out and chat, right? And in Letter Jam, everyone is, like, looking at all... So That's in Letter true. Jam, it's cooperative, and all of the players get dealt cards with the letters on them at the beginning of the game, and then they spell out a word of a certain length, depending on the difficulty, and they mix those cards up and pass them to one of the other players who lays them face down in front of them, all mixed up. So there is a word mixed up, face down in front of every player, and then you, one by one, each player takes those cards and places them into a little stand so they are facing out. So every other player can see the letter on your card, but you cannot. So you can see everyone else's letters, not your own, 
And so then everybody gets to give clues and they get to spell words using all of the letters that are visible to them. And so if Ambi has a P in front of her, I could maybe spell popcorn and I would put the first token in front of Ambi. And then I would put the second token next to an O and then I'd put the third token next to Ambi again. And so then Ambi would know, oh, in this word, I can see the O and the, the C and the O and the R and the N all in other places, but I have the first and the third letter. It must be a P, basically. That's a so, good clue. If, if those I, I know, right? I don't, I, the, yeah. the chances of that happening are probably <laughs> slim. Yeah. But then once Ambie thinks she knows the letter, she'll write something down on her little player sheet, and then she'll put that card down, face down again, and pick up the next letter. And all of the players are doing this together simultaneously throughout mm -hmm. the whole game. So you have to make sure you're giving clues that involve everybody's letters. And at the very, very end of the game, once you've run out of clues to give, everyone rearranges the cards in front of them to try to spell a word. And then when you flip them over, if it spells a real word, regardless of whether it was the word the player originally spelled, you win the game. There's a mm -hmm. more nuance to the scoring that literally nobody pays attention to, but that's generally how most people play <laughs> Letter Jam. That's how I play it. I love it. It's super fun. Mm -hmm. I, it's not a party game, but if you like spelling <laughs> words and you like playing cooperative games, it's a, it's a grand slam. It's great. Yeah, and Letter Jam was actually my number five. Yeah, it's another cooperative word game. Not quite a party game, but my parties are, are quiet and <laughs> anyway. So. I mean, you can play any game at a party, but I, yeah, like it's, it's uh, just, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's it's lower on my list because like I do love deduction and stuff, but I think like it needs the right group more so than other games because like just one person like not getting it at all will like ruin the experience kind of. That does that does happen everyone occasionally. Needs to get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or like one person just doesn't know how to like what clues to give. Yeah. They're like, I have a three letter word, and we're like, uh, like if it's an, or, or if, if it's a really like, good one, <laughs> or if they just like can't get their words at all or something. But yeah. Whereas, like, in other team games, usually, like, the other team members can help out more. But, yeah, I, I really like Letter Jam. I also really like the moments in Letter Jam where you give a clue or, like, a word that you think is going to be brilliant. And then after you've given it, you realize that there's, like, five That's options so many, for that yeah. person. And you're yeah. just like, oh, my. And it always uh -oh, happens. Whoops. <laughs> yep. You're just like, no, this will be easy. And then, yeah, the, it doesn't always go the way you think. And then I'm just sitting there apologizing. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. My number two is another team word game called Decrypto, which was published in 2018 by Scorpion Mask. And Decrypto is a team word game, so kind of like code names. But and a lot of people, when this one came out, a lot of hobby gamers were like, "This is a code names killer." And uh, but it's different. I, I, it is different. It is not a code names killer. Yeah, yeah. So I think Decrypto is. Is less accessible than code names. It's it's yeah, hundred percent. That yeah, is the reason um, it does not kill code names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more for people who are like hardcore wanting to play a more hardcore game. It's hard to games. learn. It's a really fun <laughs> yeah. game, and once you know how to play it, it's great. But it's hard to learn. Mm -hmm. And but teach. even like playing it is harder, I think, than code names. Yeah. But anyways, the way Gucci Crypto works, each team has four words behind a screen, and you know all four of your words. They're numbered one, two, three, four, and everyone on the team knows your words. The other team also has four words, and each turn. Like the person on your team, one person will be looking at a clue card, which gives three numbers. So it'll give an ordered clue, like three, two, four or something. And you're trying to get your team to guess that number by giving clues. And you give three clues. So you give like a clue for the first one for three and then a clue for the second one and a clue for the third one. So that sounds easy enough because everyone knows the words, but the other team is trying to intercept and guess the order as well. So as the rounds go on, you're going to be playing multiple rounds. And the other team will be like writing down notes of what clues were for which word. And so they'll see like, oh, word number two, it had clue like blue. And then it had a clue that was like wet. Oh, it might be like water or something related to water. So then if, if you give another clue, if you give clues that are too obvious, then the people can figure out that like, oh, any clue related to that is going to be for clue number two. So you have to give kind of like vague <laughs> clues but if also if your team doesn't guess it then you get a negative point so you're trying to get two points you get negative points for not guessing your own words but you get positive points for guessing the other team's order it's really interesting like coming up with clues that are really obscure <laughs> but then and sometimes it's like you just come up with clues that are too obscure and then your team is just like what <laughs> what are you thinking <laughs> like and that that can get really funny i also like trying to think of themed clues like sometimes i 
have my clues all be like a Pokemon or like all be <laughs> a color or something. <laughs> and that's fun. But that that's not part of the rules. <laughs> but yeah, so so Decrypto is a lot of fun, but more complicated <laughs> than Codenames. Yeah, I like Decrypto too, but I haven't played it in a long time. I, I, sh- mm-hmm. I should get that to the table again at some point. I guess I haven't really played games with like two big teams in a long time. Mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> moving on to my number one word game this probably will not surprise many of you it's rosetta the lost language it's a game literally about creating a language and that is the (laughs) coolest i love it so much it is not a game you can introduce to just anybody and (laughs) it does not work at a party i tried doing this i tried playing this game with a bunch of friends at a board game creator meetup at pax unplugged and it Mm -hmm. fell so flat so quickly because the room was noisy Um. and everybody was tired and I basically ruined this game for multiple people and I felt so bad because I was just like please give it another chance sometime it's really fun but like I recognized what was happening and I was like no I have to pull this off the table so in Rosetta one person is the author and they are given an inscription from a random deck of these like hieroglyphic-esque pictures they're not real they're not they were just constructed for the game and they have symbols and other things on them and they're somewhat complex but not too complex and that person assigns a word or meaning to that symbol secretly the other players are trying to figure out what the meaning of the symbol is and the way they do that is they write down words and the author has to then write the word that the team wrote down in the same quote unquote language as the original word. So if you see a symbol and you're like, okay, I'm gonna say that means rowboat. Then if the team says, okay, we're gonna write down water, then you have to draw a symbol in the same language as the symbol that signifies rowboat to mean water. And you can, as the author, choose to not draw a word if you don't think it'll be helpful to the team so you can just cross it off but if you think it might help provide context then you have to literally create this language on the fly and i've played it a bunch of times it's always different and it's always fascinating i love this game so much i will play it anytime anyone wants to and the company who published this game, Story Machine Games, sadly went out of business during the pandemic and they did a fire sale on their remaining stock. And I bought six copies of this game because my hope is that as I teach it to more people going forward, there will be somebody that'll love it as much as I do. And I'll just be Mm -hmm. able to say, you know what? Keep it. And then I have more copies at home. So mm, that's good. yeah, because this it, it, this is going to be one of those games that there will be a handful of people who desperately want it. You know, this yeah, is yeah. not a mass appeal it's, type of game, yeah. but for the people it's who love it, they're going to love it hard. And mm-hmm. so I want to be able to be like, oh, it's out of print. You can't get it anywhere, but here it is. Uh, so Yay. I do hope that at some point a different publisher is able to pick up the rights to it and publish it. I love it. It's my number mm-hmm. one, Rosetta, The Lost Language. Yeah, Rosetta is a lot of fun. It did not make my list, probably because I don't like being the author. It's a lot harder for me to be the author in this game than like a clue giver in the other games because you have to be more creative with like making the the symbols and stuff. It's not just like thinking of words, it's creating a language, which is hard for me. I love it so much. I always want to be the author. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I like playing with someone else who's the author. (laughs) And my number one is a game that's been like our go-to word party game recently. Uh, And that is Cross Clues, which was published in 2020 by Blue Orange Games, designed by Gregory Grard. Cross Clues is a cooperative party game. Another one. It's it's real time. <laughs> a timed cooperative party game. So that, that's why it made my number one because it's real time. But in Cross Clues, there's a grid. We play on the expert mode, which is a five by five grid, but I think the normal mode is four by four. But basically there's like A through E and one through five. And each of those has a word on it. So there's five words by five words, 10 words total. You're trying to get people to guess a coordinate of the grid. So the deck of cards has all of the coordinates in the grid and each person has one card. So like I would have A3 and and Crystal would have like B2 or something. And so all, simultaneously, we're all just thinking of clues, one word clues to, to give to everyone to have them guess that coordinate. And each time you give a clue, collectively people get one guess. 
Uh, they can discuss what they think it is. They're like, oh, I think it, like that clue goes with this. Oh, but but then like it's also like this. <laughs> um, like like sometimes in one section, like there's also there's what snow and cold are in the same area. <laughs> so it's like, oh, is that is that cold or is it snow? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I think it's really fun thinking up of clues while also guessing other people's clues because you can just go whenever you want. There's a 10 minute timer and you just give a clue whenever you're ready. And so everyone's just thinking of clues and then giving clues and then you're guessing the clues that are being given, but then also trying to think of a clue for your word. <laughs> and then once your word is guessed, then you get a new card. So it's like continual clue giving and guessing. So there's none of like the breaks in team-based games usually where like one person is giving a clue at a time. So I think that's another reason I really like it. I mean, that's the reason I like real-time games, right? And this is this is a real-time game. So yeah, Cross Clues is my current number one word party game, word game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoy real-time games, but my brain mm -hmm. does not enjoy having to do two things at once. Oh. I, I, I like, I, my brain shuts down if I have to like mm -hmm. give a thing and get a thing at the same time. I have to be like, no, 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 stop, hold on, let me do this. And then, okay, so it doesn't work for me like that, yeah. but of course I'd still be interested in playing it. <laughs> All right, that's our list. Word games, y'all. We would love to hear your favorite word games. What did we miss? What did we forget? What should we play that we haven't played before? Hit us up on social media or in the Blitz Discord. And if you're not part of our Discord, make sure you hit up the show notes and join. We do community game nights every week and it's super fun. So y'all join there and uh, let us know what your favorite word games are. And that's it for this week's Board Game Blitz. Visit our website, boardgameblitz.com, for video and blog content, as well as to get links to all our social media pages. This episode was sponsored by Gray Fox Games. Get excited, because coming to a crowdfunding platform later this year is Prophets of Doom, a 2-6 to six player card drafting and engine building game about surviving the apocalypse. And don't forget, Blitzketeers get 20% off non-exclusive items at grayfoxgames.com by using the code GFGBLITZ2022 at checkout. Join the Blitzketeer community on Discord by following the link in the show notes. Support the show by leaving us a rating and review on iTunes or Spotify. And if you want behind-the-scenes access and an invite to our private Slack channel, visit patreon.com slash boardgameblitz. Our theme song was composed by Andrew Mom. Technical support provider Toby Mouth. Until next time, more than words is all you have to do to play this game. Bye, everyone. Bye! My number two is another cooperative game, and that is... Or actually, this is my first cooperative game on the list. This is <laughs> Rosetta. No, gosh darn it. That's not my number two. I just... I, I don't know what Spoiler. just... Well, Spoiler for the patrons, apparently. Uh, they probably won't be surprised, but still. I don't know what just happened. My brain glitched, I think. <laughs> I'm going to start all of that over. <laughs> Which was published in 2018 by Le Scorpion Mask. Oh, we just call it Scorpion Mask, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the scorpion mask. <laughs> Is that like, wait, that's okay. Um, oui, oui. <laughs>